the, the, the voice he used, how he moved, how he looked, his aura, his feeling, how he talked, how he said the lines. Every single thing he did was like, wow, the you, he literally created a character from scratch. Exposition. Show, don't tell. Show, don't tell. Here we have it. Here we have it. We're here right now. The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight. We're always, we're always finished this, this countdown. Um, let's start with the good. Let's start with the good. It's always good to start with the good, you know. Um, the idea... For me, I think the, the, the thing that struck me first was the name. I was like, because you know, normally you, know, you have like Batman, Batman Returns, Batman and Robin, Batman this. So the very fact that it was called the Dark Knight already, it's piqued interest, and I think like people are like oh jeez wow okay this they're now going into a very interesting territory right now just changing the name for it and even just the and when you saw the name the Dark Knight again we'll get to the ball point but I was like wow this is really going to now delve into Batman even deeper because again Batman Begins we've never seen such focus on a character before like in Batman Begins. But we're like, oh, when we now see in the dark, it's going to go even deeper into the character and it's going to go even darker. Um, so obviously, the name for me definitely was um, one that really piqued the, the interest. Um, but look, we, 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 you cannot ignore the star of this film, the lightning rod of this film, the, the guy that stole the show. It was his film. It was, it was his film. So even people who are looking on about Dark Knight like me, I cannot deny that Heath Ledger puts forth one of the most iconic performances in cinema. Sim quite simply. Because um, I watched this opening night in IMAX. So the first thing that when I watched it in IMAX, there was actually a guy dressed as the Joker. Literally in full Joker thing in that IMAX screening. And seeing what Heath Ledger did in this film was outstanding. It was absolutely outstanding. Because it's funny. Even basically, because basically I was so obsessed with this film, I was reading everything. Every single day, I was like reading magazine articles, thing articles. Every, I was obsessed <laughs> with this film. I remember Gary Oldman saying one thing about describing Heath Ledger's performance, and <laughs> no, if Gary Oldman's gonna praise you, that's real. He said like it was like you know how you tune a, a radio that Heath Ledger he just tuned into something that was just mm, inch perfect. Because and I think the beauty about it was. Look at how we all remember when, when we first saw this image of him. First of all, when he was picked as the Joker, no, like everybody was like, Why are you picking Heath Ledger as, as, as the Joker? Everyone's like, Wait, why him? It's a, it's a horrible decision. It's horrible. What the, heck is, what, what the heck is happening here, bro? So everybody was angry. Everybody was pissed off. And then he, and then he then saw, um, which one we call it? He then saw the, the first image. The very first image he saw of the Joker was like, Okay, this looks. Interesting, like you see bald is and that. Then for me, I think what sold people was the trailer. I remember I got it, we, we got a bootleg of that trailer. I watched that bootleg about six, seven times back to back. And we're like, oh, um, you've changed things forever. You know, so it's no no, it was no no no, it was real man. Um like me. So no no, it's it's he what he did was was superb it was so superb because nobody and that's what made it so beautiful because nobody thought he could do it and it was such a left field choice because remember um paul bettany was i think who well, i think paul bettany was a front runner and so forth but because ledger was so left field he brought something that nobody saw and i believe that not even nolan saw what his ledger was going to bring to that role and um, so yeah and for me just the, the, the voice he used, how he moved, how he looked, his aura, his feeling, how he talked, how he said the lines. Every single thing he did was like, wow, the, you, he literally created a character from scratch, you know. And it was, it was a special thing, thing to watch. The dark, I like the idea of what the dark dance was trying to do. I like the idea of what the dark dance was trying to, to do. 
what it was trying to say because it was trying to elevate the comic book movie and it was saying things and going places that no other comic book movie had gone to. So I appreciated the overall approach in terms of the kinds of things it was saying and what it was talking and how it was talking about crime, criminals, a different level of, of criminal and, and greater dangers within a city and how Batman has now relates to, to, to that. For me, I thought Gary Oldman was so so superb because he goes unnoticed because of what he's legend did, but I think Gary Oldman's performance in this was absolutely amazing. You know, because he you saw what he took from begins and he went to a greater level. Because again, acting isn't just about I'm taking from me who used to act. Acting is just about, you know, how big, the big things and so forth. It's sometimes it's about just getting the character right and that's on the crunch, which is what a guy like Didi Nero does very well. And Gary Oldman just got that character. Mm. Ancient perfect. So he was he was he was um amazing. I appreciated Aaron Eckhart. I think he did a solid job, but he's not the strongest actor. He did a real good job for what he did, but I think Lee Schreiber was one of those who was keen for the role. And I think Lee Schreiber would have actually been a a better one because I just Lee Schreiber is just a stronger actor than um, um, Aaron Eckhart. But Aaron Eckhart, he did a, he did a good job. He, I mean, it's his best performance ever. He did a good job. Just that I think that role was such a good role, it could have been given more. So. And also, Doctor, it is an ext it's extremely well made. From a technical point of view, it's extremely well made, very well put together in terms of their direction, um, how scenes are put together, and, and everything. And the bad part was money. So I've said the good things here. Now here's, here's the thing about the the the, the, the Dark Man. I think it's also about storytelling and screenwriting, exposition. Show, don't tell. Show, don't tell. The reason why films like Blade Runner, Shawshank Redemption, I'll give another one, Midnight's Cowboy, Lawrence Very Big, the reason why these films are truly amazing films is they don't tell you everything about what the film is about. They tell you a few things, but they allow the viewer to interpret things. Remember when you talked about Batman to begin with? Batman just laid things out, but didn't say, this is what Bruce Wayne is. It's a lot of but like, hmm, I think this guy is this, I think this guy is that. The issue with the darkness was the lines were telling you exactly what the film was about. So there is no room for interpretation. And when you have the guys making speeches about, you know, if you live long enough, you were what's it called? Um, if the die hero will live long enough to be the, the villain, sometimes people deserve more. Sometimes people deserve how the faith rewarded. Call it in. You know, like, I mean, it's like too many speeches, too many monologues. And for me, I told you. I hated Joker's monologues. I loved the Joker when he just, he would just, he, he said like a few things and he would just sort of interlace with, with, within and he was much more free rather than having to have his longer bits of, of dialogue. Less is more, less is more. So for me, I just felt very bogged down um, by, 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 um, by that. Um, Batman, it's called The Dark Knight. But the film is really about Harvey Dent and Joker. For me, Joker steals the, the show. It's his film. He's the most interesting character. He's the most magnetic character. And I think people even like and prefer the character more so than Batman, which is weird because he's supposed to be the villain, but his Joker is far more likable <laughs> than Batman. And I think the guy that has the most interesting arc in the whole film is Harvey Dent. Batman doesn't have an arc in the film. Yes, he's trying to retire and so forth and everything, but you don't feel as if he started somewhere and it ended somewhere. Like, I want to do another video comparing the darkness to the Winter Soldier, because in the Winter Soldier, Steve Rogers starts one place and he ends one place, and it's also connected to part one. I didn't feel as if Batman grew. I didn't feel like as if Batman evolved. Okay, you went from wanting to retire. I don't know why you'd want to retire, because crime doesn't go away. So you went from wanting to retire to be pulled back in because of this new massive threat. Uh, you don't make a choice with regards to Rachel and so forth. I mean, it's just confusing. It's what it, 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 it's, and then at the end, you're like, okay, now take because I don't understand the ending. Because the ending was like, okay, I am responsible for what happened because Gotham needs to the white man's have a dent. This guy murdered people, whatever he represented or so forth, that's gone now. He committed a crime. You can't say like, oh, because you represented, you, because because I did good things. If I kill someone in cold blood, I should be um, exonerated from those crimes. No, a crime is a crime. It, 
you 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 don't get off of a crime based off the good things you did before. Crimes are independent. If you do crime, you have for the crime and you should go to the to jail. So I did get why he was taking the rap for a freaking mod murder. It made no sense. Um the Batman voice was atrocious. You see, the Batman voice, it works very well in the first film. It was atrocious. And it's like, what's it called? Uh, you see, just showed you full of people. Ready to believe in good. I was like, God. You better press that, brother. I mean, I remember when I was watching it in IMAX. The second time. And I was coming out, and there were this group of guys who were just talking. And they were literally saying that, like, bro, man, did you hear that Batman voice? Oh, man, that was awful. They were actually mocking Bill's voice. And that is a director's issue because a director should look at the dailies or look at the screen and be like, no, bro, turn it down, turn it down, turn it down. Or in, or in post-production, tweak it so that it, it works well. And <laughs> we'll get to rise because there's something wrong with sound and sound mixing with, with, with Nolan's films. Um, so I think, look, I think the thing with The Dark Dance is because it felt so different from other comic book movies, and it was doing things and saying things that no other comic book movies did, it gets elevated to such a high point. And then people sometimes say, oh no, it's not a great Batman movie, but it's a great crime movie. Watch Point Break. That's an amazing crime movie. And that opening bank heist in Dark Knights, Point Break, they did that already in the 90s. Shout out to Catherine Bigelow. Um, the probably one of the greatest crime drivers of all time is Heat. One of the shots from Heat with the bed's eye view shots where the sound is muted and you see the the car driving on the road and so forth that's taken out of heat darkness is not no way so the darkness is nowhere near as good as points break or as good as heat i'll even argue that it's not even as good as the town um directed by ben, ben, ben affleck because the issue with this darkness is you have to choose what you want to be it was trying to straddle two, two things are you a superhero batman blockbuster book movie or are you a crime drama and sometimes it was a crime drama but then it was so you're like okay serious 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 then you see Batman with like blue goggles and there's like a CGI kind of PlayStation view where he's taking out all these guys so it felt very haphazard because he hits on and points break they're consistent with what they are but with Batman is I just think that you have to choose Either you want to be a big, bold, blockbuster thing and so forth, or you want to be a cold, down and dirty drama. You have to choose one. And it just felt like split personality. It felt a lot like split personality. So I just think that ultimately speaking, um, again, look, I respect people who like the film. I can't, the beauty about film, it's sub subjective. You know, and I think I have softened my view in terms of trying to like, oh, da da I'm like it's cool and so forth so you so you guys can do what you want to do and everything but for me personally i think the darkness has amazing elements in terms of some scenes the backward scenes and um, gary Oldman's performance his ledger's perf performance and some of the things that it was trying to say and where it was trying to go for a comic book movie so for that i credit it for what it, for how bold it was but ultimately i just felt that the execution felt short because it felt very, um, um, it felt too preachy and it felt far too on the nose and it didn't feel subliminal enough or submersive a, enough in the message it was trying to convey. The, the message was very ABC, one, two, three, and that's just really um, where I stand um, with regards to the Dark Knights man. So, um, look. It is, I mean, like, it is what it is, like, like, it's not a bad film. No way. It's very well made. I just don't think that the film is as good as people make it out to, to be. Because, again, my thing is, okay, if you now compare it to other Batman films, Batman, Frank Miller even said Batman's not, 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 not in the film. And he's not in the film. <laughs> but the film is hijacked by Joker. When you think of, of darkness, you don't think of Batman. You think of the Joker. And then you think of how Harvey Dent and so forth. Then you think of Batman. So Batman is short changed and is... Like, he plays second fiddle too because Heath Ledger takes over this entire film. Completely. You know, it is, this is his, this is his, his film. He, which is crazy. He's the villain. He's the bad guy. But he is the star of this film. Um, and that's just my, my thing with it. And also, the, the fighting as well is, is obviously a running issue. Like, Nola never really got 
a handle of the fighting, you know. So look, man, I said again, look, for people that like it, cool. I mean, it is still a very well-made film, and you have to appreciate what it was trying to, trying to do and how different it was from other comic book films. And it is better than a lot of comic book films. But for how... Because there was nobody, nobody on this planet was more hyped up for that film than, than me. Ask my friends, ask anybody. I was obsessed with this film. Because every article, every magazine I was on, by my websites every single day. So maybe my benchmark was too high because I was obsessed with this film. I was thinking about this film every single day. So maybe now my, I set the bar too high and I wanted so much based off of the trailers, what I saw and so forth. And I just ultimately was disappointed with the execution and what was given. So it is what it is, man. So guys, I'll see you tomorrow for what we see when we talk about rises as we build up to the Batman.